Hey guys, welcome to our weekly news show here at Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and let's just jump right into the Indian startup news this week because Ola Electric is gonna be building their very own battery cell manufacturing facility. Currently, they import all of their battery cells from South Korea, but it looks like that's gonna be changing in 2023. Now, we gotta take this news with a grain of salt because it's not coming to us directly from Ola Electric, it's coming to us from Reuters, but they spoke with Ola, and specifically Varun Dubi, who's the chief marketing officer at Ola Electric, and he said that battery and cell research and manufacturing is an important area of focus for us and our plans are in the advanced stages. We will not comment on the specifics. Now, this battery cell manufacturing facility is expected to have a capacity of 50 gigawatt hours and they're gonna be using 40 of these gigawatt hours for their electric scooters and the remaining 10 for their upcoming electric cars. Now, it seems like that 50 gigawatt hour number is a long way off in the future. That's a milestone that they hope to achieve someday. But in the short term, by 2023, they're hoping to set up a facility that can produce one gigawatt hour and then in the next three to four years 20 gigawatt hours. All right, next up in the news, you guys might be sick of hearing about this by now. We've made a lot of shorts about it. We also have a video coming up on Monday where we're gonna be talking about it in depth. But Ashnir Grover has resigned from Bharat Bay, even though he's actually the largest individual shareholder in the company with a 9.5% stake. And this news is coming just a week after his wife, Madhuri Jane Grover, was fired. Now, Ashnir is sticking to his story. He's saying that he and his family are innocent of any wrongdoing, but Bharat Bay's board is looking into whether he and his wife committed financial fraud. Now, again, keep your eyes open for the video that we're gonna be posting on Monday at 6 p.m. where we talk about Ashnir Grover's journey with Bharat and how things got to this point. And also, apologies for me not being able to say Bharat. Bharat? Is it Bharat? Am I saying it right like that? I don't know. You guys leave a comment down below and maybe give me some advice or corrections because I really struggle with that word. <laughs> All right, next up in the news, on-demand home and beauty services provider Urban Company has announced PSOPs worth 150 crore rupees. Now, PSOPs, partner stock option plans, are very similar to ESOPs, employee stock option plans, but instead of being given to employees, they're given to partners. These are workers or service professionals who aren't necessarily employed by Urban company, but they've partnered with them. Now, the company has said that they're yet to figure out how these stock options are going to be dispersed and redeemed, but they plan to execute these PSOPs in the next five to seven years. And of course, this is great news for all 32,000 service professionals who are working with Urban Company right now, because this is going to give them the option to own a part of Urban Company. Now, it is worth noting that Urban Company faced protests last year from their service professionals over alleged unfair labor practices and low wages. All right, moving on to some acquisition news now, EdTech startup Scalar, which offers upskilling courses to college students and tech professionals, has acquired online learning platform Applied Roots in a cash and stock deal worth $50 million. So Applied Roots is a bootstrap startup that has provided emerging technology courses to over 40,000 students in the last four years. Now, as a part of this acquisition, the entire Applied Roots team, including its co-founders, are gonna be joining Scalar. And this acquisition is gonna help Scalar to strengthen their data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning courses portfolio. This is Scalar's third acquisition, and they've already clocked an ARR of $50 million, which they expect to grow to $150 million by the financial year of 2023. All right, moving on to some funding news now. Neo banking startup Neo has raised $100 million in a funding round led by Axel and Lightrock India. So Neo provides digital savings accounts to salaried professionals in partnership with various banks while also offering wealth management services through a single platform. So far, the startup has onboarded more than 4 million customers in the last six years, and they're adding 10,000 new users every single day. They're gonna be using these funds to launch new products in the lending and insurance spaces and to fund their inorganic growth through acquisitions. All right, next up in the funding news, fintech startup Perfios has raised $70 million in a funding round led by Warburg Pincus and Bessemer Venture Partners. And while N-Tracker is pegging Perfios' valuation at $400 million, some people are actually referring to this startup as a unicorn, although so far there hasn't been any official confirmation from the company. So Perfios enables its customers to aggregate and analyze crucial financial data to help them with credit assessment, monitoring fraud, and banking data aggregation. The startup is currently working with more than 200 banks, NBFCs, and fintech companies across 18 different countries. They're gonna be using these funds to finance the acquisition of other companies and to meet their capital expenditure requirements. So anyways, let's just wait and see here. We don't wanna jump the gun and say that they're a unicorn when they're not, but if they are a unicorn, then they'll be the 11th Indian startup unicorn 
of 2022. All right, next up in the funding news, Indian language audio streaming platform Pocket FM has raised $65 million. They've raised these funds from Goodwater Capital, Naver, and Taglin Venture Partners. So Pocket FM was launched in 2018, and they only managed to get 10,000 downloads in the first 18 months of their existence. But they continue to partner with content creators to add audiobooks, stories, and podcasts, offering 100,000 hours of content in eight Indian languages. And their hard work paid off. Today, they have more than 50 million users listening to their content, and they're gonna be using these funds to add more content in new languages, to strengthen their AI capabilities, and to expand their audio creator community as they plan to build India's largest audio OTT platform. All right, next up in the funding news, live tutoring platform Philo has raised $23 million in a funding round led by Anthos Capital. So Philo is a self-learning platform that allows students to type or click on a picture of the question or topic that they want to learn more about, and then Philo will connect them with a tutor in less than 60 seconds to clear their doubts. Founded in 2020, Philo already has more than 350,000 monthly active users being taught by 40,000 tutors on their platform. And they're going to be using these funds to onboard 200,000 tutors in the next 12 months and to conduct 2 million live classes per day. All right, next up in the funding news, online student loans platform Kahoo has raised $20 million in a funding round led by Westbridge Capital. So Kahoo offers loans to students to help them study in the universities that they want to study in but can't afford to because of the high cost of tuition and living expenses both within India and abroad. All right, next up in the funding news, we're going to move into our rapid funding news items segment now because I have 13 funding news items to share with you guys real quick. So first of all, we have supply chain platform for fashion and lifestyle brands LocoFast, and they've raised $15 million to launch three new product categories to expand to 15 Indian cities and to strengthen their technology platform. Next, we have Indian microblogging platform Koo, and they've raised $10 million from Caspier Venture Partners, Ashneer Grover, and Ravi Modi Family Trust. After Koo, we have end-to-end -end supply chain solutions provider Prozo, and they've raised $10 million to invest in technology, to acquire new customers, and to expand into new regions. Next, we have Buy Now Pay Later platform Snapmint, and they've raised $9 million to expand their merchant network and to launch new BNPL products. After this, we have Omnichannel platform for pet products Just Dogs, and they've They've raised seven million dollars to strengthen their online platform and to expand their offline network too. Next up, we have open source test automation platform Test Sigma, and they've raised four point six million dollars to expand their engineer and product teams. After that, we have edtech startup Ang Online, and they've raised three point five million dollars, led by a bunch of angel investors, to expand their operations by strengthening their infrastructure and streamlining content development and delivery. Up next, we have a health tech platform that assists patients with their health insurance claims. Claim Buddy, and they've raised $3 million to simplify the health insurance claim journey for their users. Following this, we have a fintech platform that offers credit to students and young professionals, Pocketly, and they've raised $3 million to expand into BNPL product offerings. Then we have PropTech startup Zapkey, and they've raised $2 million in a round led by Zerodha's co-founder Nikhil Kamath and Gruha's PropTech. Next up, we have edtech startup Bunzu, and they've raised $2 million to scale their live classes across the US, Canada, the UK, and the Middle East. Following Bunzu, we have VR and AR startup Ajna Lens, and they've raised $1.6 million to propel tech innovation by manufacturing in India and expanding their customer base. And then finally, we have AI-driven music tech startup Beethoven.ai, and they've raised $1 million to collaborate with global artists to help them create original, licensable, royalty-free music to scale their business. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you learned something from it. Also, also, big thanks to everybody who participated in our Google Form, our survey that we did last week. We really appreciate it. And we're still going through all of the entries. There were a lot of you guys who chimed in and shared your ideas. So for the five of you that are going to be joining us for the video conference where we're going to discuss and brainstorm together, just keep an eye on your inbox, your spam box, places like that, because we will be reaching out to you very soon. Of course, you won't know if you're going to be reached out to by us until you actually are. But everybody, just keep an eye if you gave valuable feedback then there's a chance that we'll be reaching out to you. Also, big thanks to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, our decacorns, and our hectacorns. And big thanks to you for watching this video through to the end. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires. Oh, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one.